everyone, I'm Will Terrell, and welcome to this video. <laughs> uh, so today I'm doing a quick sketch of a guy, uh, he was actually in my last, my uh, how to get out of a drawing funk video that I did uh, about a month ago. He was one of the characters that walked by in the background. <laughs> um, yes, this wonderful security guard. <laughs> My friend Brandon Green made a interesting observation that he is basically like Randy from uh, a Christmas story when he's like stuffed in the snowsuit and can't move his arms. He's like waddling around. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna do a quick sketch of him, and then I want to talk about doing um, give some advice on how to be a better amateur. And I don't mean amateur as in uh, you know you're young it could be anybody that's starting out into a career that they're not already a professional uh, or on they're on the cusp of being a professional I feel like this is something I experienced with doing with getting into animation you know I'd been a professional in an other in several other industries but being becoming a professional in animation I still feel like I was coming into it as an amateur I didn't have the same level of experience that a lot of people that have been at it for 20 or 30 years so I don't want you to think that this is like a disparaging thing, you know, if I'm calling you an amateur. <laughs> because we're all amateurs at some point. I mean, even your favorite, absolute favorite creators were started out exactly where you're at at some point in their lives. Uh, they've been through the same awkward, insecure, I don't know what's going on phase. And so they, they tend to understand where it is that you're coming for, from if you feel like you're... Um, you feel like you are an amateur and you're kind of naive <laughs> so you might be thinking to yourself like what could possibly be good about being an amateur <laughs> the truth is it's not as bad as it seems there's a lot of upsides a lot of benefits to uh, being an upstart <laughs> first of all being naive itself is actually kind of a blessing if you knew how much work you had ahead of you when you were starting starting down the path of becoming a professional, you would never even begin. I mean, you think you have an idea, but you have to multiply it by 50 times 100, the amount of work that you thought you had to do to be get good enough to be successful at whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Uh, and so being naive is actually kind of a good thing. <laughs> It takes a certain amount of uh, self-confidence to say, you know what, I have what it takes to be really good at this. Uh, but it also takes a certain amount of being self-delusional to make it through all the struggles. <laughs> so that's a good thing, you know. <laughs> but it's important to be aware of both of those, that you don't know what you don't know. You don't know everything, and that's all right. You know, that's why you're there. That's why you're there to learn. You're there to ask questions, to get to know people. Uh, and so you got to find that right balance between being confident in what you're capable of doing, but also self-aware that you are not, you know, God's gift to whatever it is that you're attempting to do. What I'm saying is you got to have humility. <laughs> There's nothing that'll stop your career in its tracks more than being an arrogant jerk. Uh, and I know this from firsthand experience. <laughs> Being humble and excited and passionate about what you're doing opens so many more doors than being uh, sort of a condescending, arrogant jerk. You know, it's hard to admit that, but that's, you know, being that guy myself when I was in my 20s, uh, it definitely closed more doors than it opened. But if I hadn't been, you know, self-confident in myself i would have never pursued art as a career so take it or leave it you know <laughs> but that's why i'm making this video is to pass on you know be aware of where you fall in the realm of <laughs> how good you are and even if you are good like if all your teachers say you're say you're amazing and all your friends and your mom say that you're amazing take it with a grain of salt like even if you are amazing um, have the attitude that you can learn from every person that you meet. It doesn't matter how good they are. If you're thinking that the only people you can learn from are the ones that are better than you, then you are missing out on so many opportunities, but you're also like separating yourself 
from your peers. You know, where if you had the attitude that you can learn from every person that you meet, even if they only draw stick figures, um, it's suddenly those people appreciate you more and you become more inclusive and they want to see you succeed instead of it being a competition about who's better. <laughs> Like I, I, I'm the, of the mindset that we're all living up to our fullest potential. We're all on the path to becoming the per- people that we're meant to be. And uh, some of us are just farther along than others. And you don't know if you're going to get hit a roadblock down the road and have to you know, take a year off or two years off because of whatever reason, financial reasons, health reasons, whatever. Uh, so just appreciate what you have and who you're around now okay so so what are some other ways that you can be a better amateur one thing is uh having the realization that you have the potential even as a beginner to make other people's lives better you have the potential as a beginner to make your favorite creative people's lives better and the lives of everyone that you work with um and in the beginning, when you're still learning the, the craft of what, it, what you're wanting to do, um, sometimes the only thing you can do is just showing up on time and being easy to work with, being teachable. Sometimes that's all you have going for you, and that's uh, that goes a long way because they say in the industry, you know, you have to have three things to become successful. The first one is you need to be good. The second one is you need to be fast and reliable. And the third one is you need to be easy to work with or fun to work with. And you only need two of those to succeed. (laughs) So if you are super amazing and and, uh, people love your work and you're super talented that way and you meet deadlines, it doesn't matter if you're a jerk or not. People will still work with you. It's harder because, uh, you know, especially in animation, I've seen that you know, talking to line producers and executives that they would much rather hire a lesser talented artist that meets deadlines and e- is easy to work with than to hire somebody that's super talented and it's just a pain in the butt. In fact, that's one of the secrets with working in the animation industry is it's so hard to get in because it's so hard to fire people. <laughs> you wouldn't think that, but uh, I know like at Disney, uh, they tend to work with interns for at least two years before they hire somebody because once you get in the door and this is it's like that at nickelodeon it's like that at warner brothers once you get in the door it's really difficult to fire somebody just because you know there's a union and you they can't just fire you because you're a jerk you know like they can't just fire you because you don't get the style of the show um they have to fire you you know find real reasons to fire you and that's often really difficult And so because of that, they make it extremely difficult just to get in the door. And usually it comes down to you have to know somebody that will get you in the door. Um, It's, you know, that phrase, it's not it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's more specifically, it's not who you know, it's who knows what you can do. And once you make those connections and you get in the door, (laughs) it leads to the next job, the next job. But if you're an amateur just getting in that first gig it's like nearly impossible and comics is the same way you know the editors aren't going to just hire somebody off the street even if your portfolio shows that you're really good they're looking for people that recommend i mean nearly every job i've ever gotten whether it's comics animation illustration it was because somebody recommended me it's not you rarely get just a phone call out of the blue somebody looking you up online i mean that does happen but most of the time, especially for the higher paying projects, it's because somebody recommended me. They're like, he was easy to work with, he was fun to work with, and he's decently talented. <laughs> but he meets his deadlines. You know, I've got those two going on, and I'm really working on the third one, which is becoming super talented, like artistically, because, uh, you know, that's when you become the golden unicorn, <laughs> where you're always in demand. You're super talented, you're super fast, and you're just fun and easy to work with. You get those three right, and you're the golden unicorn. (laughs) So as an amateur, you don't want to worry too much about how you're going to get in. Um, A lot of, you know, it's easy to do. You you spend a lot of time just overthinking, like, how do you break in? How do you break in? And... 
you can't figure it out like as soon as they i remember in comic books they always talked about like as soon as they you know somebody would find a hole in the fence and they'd sneak into the industry they'd go back in behind them and they'd patch up that hole (laughs) because everybody breaks into their career in a completely unique and different way there's no like set way of doing it. it it really has to do with you so focus on just becoming the best at what you do Focus on getting faster and focus on just creating value for others, making making contacts and being friendly, being easy to talk to and easy to work with. Um, Like check out my videos, my people sketching videos on how to how to get good feedback and how to network to get an idea of, you know, the best way to communicate with people. Um, Because it's not about getting what you want. It's creating a relationship, you know, and these relationships aren't temporary like you 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 worked you work on a small project with somebody one you know for like a month and if you create a relationship with them it's a project that will lead to the next gig and the next gig and the next gig like right now um i just got a job offer at warner brothers for an actual like i'm gonna be on a show for a whole year uh and i guess i'm announcing it here (laughs) I can't say what show I'm on, but they're hiring me on like as an actual an employee. I'm gonna be a real boy. <laughs> uh, but all these projects that I'm, I've done, you know, I've worked on four different series for Warner Brothers in the last year since I've been out here, and everyone has been because I did a little work for somebody here, and then they they loved working with me, so they recommended me to somebody else, and they recommended me to someone else, and they recommended me to someone else. And all I did was focus on creating value for the people that surround me each day. Like, I don't look at my job as being an artist. I look at my job as making other people's lives better. And I think that goes a long way. You know, and I, I've seen the difference. There's you know, art, some artists that show up because it's a paycheck. And they get resentful. They get frustrated that uh, they're not getting the respect they deserve. They don't, they're not getting what they want out of it. And it, it, it saps the energy from the relationship. When, If you just focus on creating value for others and making your boss's job easier, making your executive producer's job easier, making your editor's job easier, making your coworkers' days better, like, then it changes everything so that you become, you become a part of the system that they look forward to working with and they want to work with you on the next project. And I, another interesting thing I found in animation is that uh, so many of the sh- my favorite shows that I watched in the 90s uh, in the early 2000s were created by the same people and they just keep moving from one project to the next project to the next project like a little family and they try and keep them together because once you get the wrong person on the team it changes the energy and it makes it difficult having a career is 90% who you know and I guess that's a distinction I'm getting at for how to be a better amateur is to think of it not as a, a job that you're working at, but as a bu- you're building a career, a, you know, a career that's going to laugh- last for your whole lifetime. So this job that you're working on today, this you know, if you're an intern, um, you know, you, and you're, this is your first experience with it. Don't think of it like this one project. Think of it like the first step for a lifetime of projects and the people that you're working with. It are you're going to work with them again for the rest of your life, and they're hopefully be friends with you this brings me to the most important lesson here you get you may get a job because of your portfolio but your career comes from who you are it's not it's not enough to get hired Uh, that's just day one but to stick around to thrive in a career to get recommended for the next job by the people you work with you have to be someone that creates value these projects are usually stressful enough (laughs) and if you could make it just a little bit less stressful for everyone else then that goes a long way (laughs) would you rather be right or would you rather be happy you know you have to learn to let things go you have to learn to pick your battles over what's really important um if you argue over the petty little things you weaken your relationships for those things that really matter when you you know when you only challenge when it's absolutely important it carries so much more weight plus Um, if the people around you don't feel like they always have to expect a confrontation (laughs) anytime they talk to you it's much more likely that people will actually want to talk to you another way to be a better amateur is to be patient 
Um, you know, don't always be in a hurry for things to get done. <laughs> I'll give you one example. We had an intern on one of the projects I worked on last year, and he was, uh, by all accounts, from the producers and the uh, production assistants, uh, this intern was like one of the best that they'd ever worked with. I mean, he was super excited, was a go-getter. He you know, made decisions on his own, and he just made things happen. He took feedback really well. He was awesome to work with. He made a really good impression. And I could see him being very successful in the animation industry. Like, if he wanted to go into production, he could probably do that already. <laughs> but I think he wants to be an artist, which, you know, it's like a whole other skill set to learn. But one week, our line producer went out of town on vacation. And this poor intern, who had only been there for like a week and a half, uh, suddenly had to ship an entire episode by himself. <laughs> Within a few days, he was like stressed out and just brushed he was like you know when's everybody getting gonna get everything turned in you know like i gotta ship this i gotta ship that and uh i get i kept trying to remind him like listen it it'll work out it always works out just, just do your job be patient slow down uh but by wednesday he was so stressed out that it was stressing everybody else out that's when I realized that like his job or the line producer's job who he was taking for that week is to keep everybody calm it's not necessarily to get everything shipped uh, and I, I told that to him I was like listen you've got to your job is to just chill out <laughs> keep everybody else from stressing out just be calm your energy affects others especially under deadline pressure <laughs> and so he calmed down slowed down and suddenly everything smoothed out again and he was able to ship the episode by the end of the week uh, but that's something that it's it's really difficult to learn especially when you're first starting out and you think the most important part is to get the job done not how you get the job done and learning patience learning to be calm in a storm that's something that usually comes from years and years of meeting deadlines but if you start working on it as an amateur, it'll go a long way. In fact, your energy in general is powerful. If you have good energy, like you, I'll be honest, there's a lot of cynical artists. Like the longer you've been in your career, the easier it is to become cynical. And so to have a young artist come in or somebody with youthful enthusiasm come in suddenly and just be excited and passionate again and not have all this bullshit like that weighs people down just be fun and like i said in my you know how to network and how to get good feedback videos it's like be you know bring that out of people ask them why they got into the business to begin with and and be that person that's excited about who they are and and where they how they got to where they're at and that changes their energy suddenly you can remind them of something that they'd forgotten about and that in itself is really powerful and while i may not be an amateur anymore i mean i've i feel like i'm a professional in a lot of different areas i still live as though i'm an amateur i still have i try to hold on to that humility and i try to hold on to that youthful enthusiasm like i don't i keep bringing up that phrase because it, it's important and you really have to fight to keep that energy, that youthful enthusiasm. And I know how powerful it can be as a tool to, to bring the best out of others, even people that have been around, that people that inspired me to become artists. I've been able to positively impact their lives just by being excited about who they are and reminding them of what was magical about their careers and about their lives. I, there is a caveat to that. <laughs> when you meet your idols, don't tell them that you loved their show that they created or their comic book that they created when you were a little kid. Because <laughs> that just reminds them, oh crap, I am so old. <laughs> because to you, it's only been a few years. But to them, it was like, oh, that was 30 jobs ago. <laughs> that was 30 years ago or 20 years ago. And... Uh, it just reminds them of how old they are. So just, you know, be excited about what they do, but don't necessarily reference how long ago that was. <laughs> and don't ever, ever, ever 
list them as their your your second or third or fourth favorite artists <laughs> like it sounds like a compliment but it's really not <laughs> oh you were my third favorite artist ever and it's like thanks <laughs> just tell them you love their stuff tell them you love them don't tell them where they fall in your top 20 <laughs> I say this for your own good, because someday some kid's going to come up to you and they're going to be like, oh, you're my third favorite artist. And you'll be like, oh, God, why did I ever say that? <laughs> so if you're a young artist, you're you know just out of high school and you're wanting to get into a career, uh, the best thing I can tell you is find projects that get you excited, that can get you experience. Uh, and start making connections. Like if you, if you do go to art school or you meet people that are your age that are starting out, those people are going to be your peers for the rest of your career. So build those relationships and do your best to protect them, you know, and and enable them, encourage them every step of the way. Be excited for their successes because you will have successes too, and you want them to be excited for you. It's not a competition. Like you, you are all becoming successful. <laughs> you don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know how much work is involved. But you are all moving towards that direction, you know? Some people are just farther along. So don't be petty, you know, be excited for others. And in your 20s, like I, I worked twice as hard in my 20s as most of my other friends. And I made a lot of mistakes, but the result is that I have a career now that I'm really happy about. It's like in your 20s, don't worry about money. Which is ironic, because that's when you worry about money the most, because you never have it. <laughs> but don't worry about like demanding more cash up front. Worry about getting the experience and making the connections. Because it, it grows exponentially. Over time, you start to make so much money that it doesn't even make sense to work a job anymore. A paycheck is not the same as a career. If you're coming from a place of working like an hourly wage, you're probably coming from a mindset of a limiting belief. This is not selling your life one hour at a time. This is selling your craft one project at a time. Now I make more in a week than I did in a couple months at an hourly wage job, you know, 10 years ago. But if all I ever looked at was the paycheck, I would never have advanced. I focus almost solely on creating value for others and investing in myself. I invest in my career every day so that by the end of the job, I'm more valuable to whoever hires me for the next project. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, felt kind of meandering, but I, ho I hope there was something in there that you got out of it. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Like ever since I got into animation, um, you know, I, I felt like an amateur again, and it, it, I was thinking to myself, you know, this is this is probably something I can pass on. So I hope it was helpful, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and keep smiling. <laughs>